Hey everybody, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this unicorn levy. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do this tutorial because it's kind of long, so I'm probably going to break it up into pieces. But this first thing that I need to show you is how to do this stitch. And this is a stitch that I, two things, I really, at the, at the time I was beginning to to crochet, I really like the shell stitch, but I wanted to do something more textured with it. So I took the shell stitch and I kind of created my own uh, spin on it to where I can make uh, it more textured. And then I always wondered what it would look like if I added color. So I just started to make in this rainbow color and decided, well, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it to a lovey. And so I decided to make the top part unicorn because me and my daughter were like looking at it going, it's like unicorn pattern. So decided, okay, we're going to do unicorn. And we have a little girl that was just born not long ago, my niece that I, I said would be perfect for. So we went ahead and made this in mind for her. So I used a total of 16 colors and that includes white without white, 15 colors and white. I used, had a bunch of scrap yarn, so I used that, but if you want to go and get one skein of each color, you can, but as you can see, it's not, it's not really used for maybe one, two rows, so you'll use each color, two rows, and you'll make a strand of hair with it too, so it really doesn't take a lot, so if you have scrap yarn, you can make, just get enough to make two rows. And a little bit of the hair but you don't have to add it in the hair if you don't want I just decided to do all the colors with one strand of hair so but the white you were going to need at least um, what did I put on here two full skeins yeah if you're going to make it this size I would say get two full skeins of white it should be enough for the blanket and to make the unicorn and this is worsted white yarn four ply for the US ten ply for Australia and I used a five millimeter hook or size eight hook for the US and I also used a three millimeter hook and a three millimeter hook is a size C for the US and I, I use this to make the doll the afghan was just made with a five millimeter hook uh, also for the whole pattern you will eventually for the for this doll you're going to need felt to make the eyes or you can design uh, your own crochet eyes if you want but I used felt for the eyes and you're going to need a tapestry needle for sewing of the, the little animal onto the parts of him, obviously, and also to sew her onto the afghan itself. You're also going to need a hot glue gun so that you can attach the felt eyes onto your project, onto your uh, head, and also to each other. Or just some hot or some uh, really strong uh, adhesive of some kind and scissors and also fiber fill that's what I used for the inside the stuffing and that should be it okay to get started we're gonna use the white color first this ruffle is made at the end after the the afghan is done so you're gonna just be starting with the first row of white which I'm going to be showing you with orange because I think we have to see it better than white Oh, I wanted to tell you, uh, name this stitch the starfish stitch. So if you want to go back and look at my older videos where I teach you how to do this in, uh, with for, to make a scarf or a hat, I have those patterns on my, my website if you want to check that out. So first, go ahead and grab your white yarn. And we want to start with multiples of six plus one unless you're unless you're chaining then you'll want to do in multiples of six plus two but I recommend that you don't do chaining I highly highly recommend that you do single crochet foundation stitch so I recommend doing that so for this I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how to do the single crochet foundation stitch and for the size that I need I did 90 for the lovey so you want to do 90, then 
chain one and then turn. So we're going to be a total, total of 90. If you want to do twin size, full size, queen size, or king size, I have all that information on my pattern. I also have my gauge and everything else, all that information you can find on the pattern page. Okay, to do a single crochet foundation stitch, you want to start with a chain of two. Then you're going to go back in through that very first chain here that you did, which is the second chain from the hook. You're going to go through one of those loops there. I guess you can only really go through one. And you'll pull up a loop. Now you want to only go through one of those loops. So yarn over, go through one. And that creates a chain, which you can hold on to if you want, because you don't want to lose that. This is the chain you want to go into in a minute. So you want to finish your single crochet by going through both loops. Now where you were just holding, that's the chain. You want to go into that stitch, pull up a loop, then only pull through one. And again, that's the chain. You're creating a chain. And now you're going to create the single crochet. You're creating the chain and the single crochet all at once, which makes this like really super easy to do most things. So it's really important that you learn. So go through that first one again, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through only one, then yarn over and pull through two. And you can see the loops that you just went through, so you know that's not the correct loop. Go down one and go through that loop. That's your chain. You pull through one, create the chain, then pull through two. And you want to continue to do this until you have 90 single crochet foundation stitches. Okay, so I went ahead and I did my minimum, I did a chain, uh, I should say a single crochet foundation stitch of, uh, let's just say I did 90. So the multiples is six plus one, so go ahead and do one more if you're doing a single crochet foundation stitch. And if you've done a chain of 90, go ahead and do plus 2 now. Because what you're doing is doing in multiples of 6, 6, 6, 6, until you've reached your desired size. And then if you're single crochet foundation stitch, if you use that, then only do one more. And chaining, you do two more. So I'm going to go ahead and do my one more, my plus 1. So you should have a total of 91. So when you get done, you want to chain 1 and turn. For row two, we're going to stick with the same color and you're going to do a single crochet in the very first stitch. Then you're going to skip two single crochets, so one, two, and in this third single crochet over, you want to put five double crochets worked in that same stitch worked, crocheted, however you want to say it. Just put five double crochets in that same stitch. And then again you're going to do what you did on this side, on the opposite side. So you've got your five double crochets, so again you're going to skip two on this side and then do a single crochet here. And then now you have your repeat for the row. You're going to be skipping two. So the next two stitches you skip and then the third one over again you're going to be putting five double crochets all worked into that same stitch. Three, four, and five. Skip two, one, two, third one over, single crochet. And again skip two, third one over, do five double crochets. So you want to continue to do this all the way to the end and you should be ending on a single crochet. Okay, did my five single crochets, skip two, and in the very last stitch here, put a single crochet. This is the, the beginning that you get whenever you do the single crochet foundation stitch, but it's not a stitch, so don't go into this very last one. So you go into the last single crochet of the row, and then this is where you usually change colors. Now you can just feed it through the loop that's there or what I recommend doing is I will back out and finish my last single crochet of the row with my new color. 
So I'm going to cut my yarn. Since I'm changing colors all the time, I can't feed it up. So that's the, unless you want to leave the fringe on the end, which you can, uh, I hid all my tails and then single crochet to make it kind of a clean border. So if you're doing it the way that I do, just be prepared. You're going to be hiding a lot of tails. And this is what I mean. I hid my tails and I did a row of single crochets all the way around. Well, I did a single crochet here and then on the ends I did the ruffle. But on the sides I did the single crochets just to have a nice end. But I had to hide all my tails first. But I still sit in front of the TV, watch Netflix. Wasn't such a big deal. And she's worth it. I'm so cute. I'm so worth it. Do it. Do it. Anywho, back to Sanity. Now you want to take the next color and I'm just going to create a loop by just folding a little bit of the but make sure you leave a tail because you're going to be hiding that later and you will pull through to finish your single crochet like that then I just pull to tighten a little bit chain one and turn now it's completely up to you if you want to take the new tail and the one you just cut to secure it a little bit better and I, I tend to always do that I'll just tie those two together to make sure but it's, it's more work it's up to you though but I like to make a good product I want to know it's going to be good so after you've done that you want to do a single crochet in the very first stitch I'm going to get a little closer to make sure you can see this so you will always begin and end a row the same way with a single crochet so now it brings us up to our, our shell of five double crochets. So we have five posts here. A post of each single crochet, I mean double crochet. And we're going to be alternating with front post, then back post, then front post, and back post, and front post single crochets. So the first one you're going to pick up. Sorry, I think we're going to be, yeah, front post double crochets. Yep, double crochets. So we're going to start doing front post. So you're going to pick up that first post of your shell. And then don't forget to yarn over before you do that because we're doing double crochets. And then again, yarn over, find the next post of the shell, push it back. And then do a double crochet. Yarn over. Now you're in the middle one now. Do front post. Yarn over, grab the back, or push that one back, and then your final one will be front post. So you'll have the front post, back post, front post, back post. And that's what it looks like. When you get done with your last front post, in between here, there's a single crochet. You'll just be single crocheting in the single crochet. And then you'll repeat. Yarn over, pull up the front post of the next shell, do a front post double crochet. Yarn over, pull the next double crochet back, back post double crochet. Now you're in the middle, do front post, and then back post, then front post. Remember, this is the first color of your blanket. This one here was white. The next one I did, and if you want to do the exact same colors that I did, I have a picture that you can use from my site and keep it up all the time, and you can try to stay with the same colors. The first one I did here, the one that I'm doing in pink here, was red, and then the next row will be white, and then it'll be dark orange, and then white, and then brighter orange, and then white. You're always going to do every other row white, and the white row will always be the shells. And uh, the next one will be the front and back post, which will create the starfish stitch. Again, once you finish the third, you'll want to do a single crochet in the single crochet. And then again, you'll pick up the post and continue. So continue your row, and then I will show you how to start the next row so that you can have the full pattern of how to do this. And I'm going to go back to my orange because that's what I'm using for my white this time. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you when you get done. OK, 
Okay, again, after your last uh, double crochet, uh, front post double crochet, the very last stitch here is a single crochet. And again, I don't complete the very last single crochet. I go ahead and cut my yarn, and grab up your white again, which is going to be my orange, and pull your white through again. And then you can tie those two tails together now or later. I typically go back later on and do it before I hide it. So you'll want to chain one with your new color and turn. Like I said before, you're always going to do a single crochet in the very first stitch. And now we're going to do the, the shell again. And just like you did before, you want to skip two stitches. And then in the next stitch, you'll do your five double crochets. And this is the middle. If you look at it this way, the middle one here is the one we're going to be using to put our shells in because it's going to be lined up directly one shell in front of the other. So you'll be skipping the first front post double crochet and then the back post and then you'll be working your shell on that front post. Or here you can just easily count uh, two, one, two, and then the third one over you'll do your five double crochets. And then you'll skip two again, one, two, and you can see this is a single crochet. That's where you'll put your single crochet. Then again, skip two, third one over, put your double crochet. Four and five, then skip two, single crochet in the next. Skip two, five double crochets. So you want to continue to work your row the same way. Pretty easy. The shell stitch is super easy. So five, skip two, single crochet in the single crochet skip two, then five double crochets, and then you should end with skipping these last two, single crochet in the very last one, though uh, if you're going to be switching the yarn like I am, you want to leave that last single crochet open so you can finish it with your next color, which will be the dark orange on the blanket if you're going to be using like I did mine. So now again, you will switch your color and turn, and again, you're going to be doing a single crochet worked in the very first single crochet, and then you'll be doing your front post double crochet worked on the first of the first double crochet, back post on the second, front post, back post, front post, just like I showed you with here. And you're going to repeat this until, and I will show you from the back part because there's a unicorn on the front part, so you can't really see. So I did that uh, with all 15 of my colors. Like I said, I used 16 total, but I was counting the white. So five indiv uh, 15 individual colors. And then I did this middle row with double white. And then I started doing the reverse. So I did basically two rows of white you know, you do the shell and then the next row. So what I just showed you, where the little sample piece go? There. So I would, I did the shell in white like I, like I did here, but then the next row, instead of switching colors, stay with white. So that's what I mean by I did a double row of white here. And then your very next row, you'll do as normal. So your next shell row will also be white. So essentially, essentially you're going to have three rows of white, one completed, and then the next one will just be the shells. And then you'll add the color that you have on this side on the next row. And then you're just basically you're doing the colors that you did but opposite. So that way when you fold the blanket in half, all your colors should line up. So it'll look the same on this side, this side of the blanket as this side of the blanket. And also using that little white row later on will help you be able to sew on your head because you're going to be using that as the the row to keep aligned 
and you know also that she's in the middle. So go ahead and continue to do that for, let me see how many rows total. So because I did 15 colors and each row is two rows, then a total of 30, 30 rows, which will bring you up to the last color here. So you'll do 30 rows and then your 31st row will be a double white row. And then your 32nd row will be the white shell and then your 33rd row will be the next color and then you'll go down the other way. So the whole total blanket is like 62 rows. 60 other colors here, 60 other colors here, and then double white rows. So 62 rows. Okay, so I've been working my tails and I recommend when you hide your tails that you hide them on the, the back side. See, this is the part where the color is showing. Uh, like the fork, if you want to say that, the color is showing like a fork, the three on this side, and then the back is where it only shows on like two of them. Because remember, you do two back posts and three front. So I try to hide it as best I can on the back side. Went through, I tied all my tails together, and then now I'm just kind of hiding them. Once you get going, it's not so bad. And you can hide them while you're doing something else. So once you get done, just cut your tails, hide once you've hid them. And then you're ready to start the border. So to start the border, you want to attach, oh, um, one other thing is for the, the top part here, <laughs> I should say, uh, the very, very last row, I believe I did it here too. Nope, I didn't. I don't see that I did. But I'll recommend it to you. Um, I recommend on this very last row that you go ahead and attach your yarn to the back part of it first like this. Attach your yarn on the back part and then just do one single crochet in each stitch. The reason why I, I, I recommend doing the, the last row of single crochets here on your afghan before starting the, the ruffle is because uh, it will look more even with the other side. Because see here it's like double white and here it would just be straight up white into the other color and it doesn't look as even so I recommend do one row of single crochet with your white to make this ruffle look the same on this side so just attach it on the back side of the last row do one row of single crochets Make sure that's the last, no, this is the last one. Okay. So once you've done a row of single crochets, then you can chain, I would say chain two, and turn. Now we're going to be making the ruffle border. And to make the ruffle border, you're only going to be doing it on the top and on the bottom. The sides will be working single crochets. So we have a chain of two, and we're going to be working right into this very first stitch. So go ahead and yarn over go into that first stitch and do two double crochets worked in that same stitch. The chain two will count as the very first stitch of the row. So then we're going to go into the very next single crochet and we're going to work three double crochets into that one. You want to work three double crochets in each stitch along the top. So go ahead and put three double crochets worked in all your stitch along the top row and then I'll show you how to start your side. Okay, just finished my ruffle, putting three double crochets in each stitch around and now I just did my very last stitch on this side. Oh, I'll hide that tail later. Okay, now you're going to be working down the side and you're only going to be doing single crochets 
this part was a bit difficult. I tried to at least get in, in what I call a section, which is the, the two colors together. I tried to at least do one single crochet there, somewhere in the middle, and then one single crochet here. At least three in the section kind of helped prevent it from pulling and also made it look really nice. So I've got two here, and then I got one on the on each color here, but it, sometimes, I'm only putting two in each section, but sometimes to prevent it from pulling, I would add an extra. Like there, I put one there, and I'm going to go ahead and put one on the other, I mean on the same, same one. But every so often I would just look and make sure that this isn't being pulled. If so, then maybe you'd want to back up and do a few more. But this is the beginning. You know, this is the double crochet on the side here. So I'm going to go ahead and put one on the double crochet and then one on the chain area. See right here, it's kind of pulling a little, but it's closing the ruffle area here. So that's okay. And you won't see that because it's going to be nothing but ruffle on the end here. This just needs to, just keep this side as neat as you can. Take your time. Uh, at least put one single crochet in each spot, but you are working with double crochets, though they're all one on top of the other. So you may want to put a third in there if you can find it, if you find it's pulling too much. But slowly make your way until you get to the other side. And then again, this is my side stitch, so I'm going to go ahead and put a single crochet in that side stitch and chain one. That'll bring me up to a higher level. So then when I go to my first stitch here with that chain one, I'm going to be able to do three double crochets pretty easily on this side. So one two and three. And I tried not to do this very tight because this is only like a single loop on this side because it's the chain. But it's okay once it's a ruffle everything's going to blend everything's the same color. So everything should come out just fine. Just keep working your three double crochets and you can start to see it do that then you know that it's going good. So you're doing the same thing as you did on the top. You're putting three, three single crochets in each stitch and it should be really super easy to find because they're they're single on this side. They're a single strip of yarn that you're going to be working all three of them in until you get up to the, the end again. And then you'll again along the side you'll work it all the way up until you get to where the, well actually you're going to be coming from this way. So you're going to slip stitch, I mean you're going to single crochet all the way here and then you can just slip stitch into the beginning chain two here to finish it off. And then chain one, cut your tail and you will have completed the blanket. And then for the next tutorial, I'm going to start showing you how to make the little unicorn and attach them to your blanket.